This conference will now be recorded. Oh, do you will. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Again, uh, just appreciate everybody here and uh, give me the time. Uh, like like Tamika said, I am not a recruiter or anything like that. I've just been, um, we're hurting for people here at Novetta. That's who I work for. I'll get into that in just a minute. And uh, so I've just been uh, trying to get on other uh, chats, uh, some that I've already been on or some that I'm just new to and try to post some of the jobs. And it's really just as a networking, um, trying to help people out, to be honest with you, because uh, it's a win-win because we need people and uh, I, I love the tech people. So it ends up working out real well because we can get them set up with a good job and everything with working with me. Um, so what I do right now is I, I, I am a scrum master. So I work for a dev SecOps integration for the DOD. I'm on a DOD project for Novetta. Novetta, we've been around for like about 10 years. I've only been with them for like around six months. I just retired from the military and um, I was able to do an internship with Novetta and they ended up hiring me on after I actually retired. And it just kind of worked out. <clears throat> okay, so Novetta, um, we've been around for about 10 years. And like Tamika said, we majority we do is DOD contracting or intelligence community contracting. Um, but it's all tech, tech. I guess our really our big three focuses are DevSecOps, um, machine learning, um, and then just, uh, just the agile uh, way of uh, uh, working. If you're not familiar with Agile or Scrum or any of that, uh, I'll get into that, to, into that later. But it's just a, a method of uh, organizing teams and uh, your projects and trying to move them forward in a faster manner and um, um, getting away from, especially on the DOD and the government side, it's always been a waterfall project. Whereas, okay, two years ago, you told us what you wanted. Now it's two years now we offer it. And that doesn't work for technology because everything's constantly changing so fast and uh, with the agile mindset, you try to provide to the customer um, something, I guess, that's more real time, something that they can use. Thank you. Yeah, the Novetta.com. Now, we're actually got, just got bought out by Accenture Federal Services, which is a good, it ends up being a good thing. I wasn't very happy about it at first, but I'm actually very happy about it now. Novetta, we're uh, around 1,300 um, employees, but right now we have 348 jobs open. So, I mean, <laughs> that's like 25% we don't, uh, we need. So as we go to AFS with it, with it, which is Accenture Federal Services, basically what we're doing is we're just going to be a, uh, a portfolio under AFS and AFS has 12,000 employees, which is a good thing, especially for the people here, because like uh, Tamika said, the majority of Novetta is focused on government contracts, but AFS is just an, it's just a whole different, I guess, umbrella for um, different types of projects. It's not just majority government contracts. Um, basically, what, the, what Novetta will continue doing is the DOD and the IC, but it's not that it's been a select thing in the past, but it's always been hard for people that are outside of the DOD projects and the IC community, IT, IC is intelligence community, like the NSA, CIA, all those kind of people or whatever, um, to get into those um, jobs because of security clearances. So the majority has been a veteran who already had their security clearance while they're in the military, they get out and they just kind of already have that security clearance and they go into one of those jobs. And the reason behind that is these big contracting companies will try to we'll do a contract with the DOD and they'll say, okay, in one year from now, we're going to start this contract and it's going to provide this many uh, employees at this uh, clearance, right? Well, how it's been in the past is, okay, we need to hire just for this contract. So what we need at this time are people with a top secret. So they have not been investing in people prior saying, okay, well, this person doesn't have any clearance, but they have the skills. So we're going to, it's going to take them one or two years to get that clearance. We'll keep them on our books working until they get that clearance. That hasn't been a thing in the past. Novetta has been actually been uh, doing that for quite a few years now. And now that you see, we have 25% uh, positions that need to be filled and the majority are uh, clearance, um, uh, cleared um, positions. What we're doing is we're actually taking people um, like, like everyone here and uh, employing them in different 
projects or putting them on the projects that they will eventually be on, but in a part where they don't have to uh, deal with the, um, uh, the classified information. So what it, what happens when you come into a contract is the company actually has to sponsor you. So they can sponsor you for your clearance. For them, so they you for how your they want people on staff to level them up to that. Sorry. All right. Thank you. <laughs> That's no problem. Uh, so, um, so the company will sponsor you and it costs the company, I don't know, say $10,000, but it takes them a year or two to get you to that, that clearance. Well, once you have that clearance, uh, you keep it for say six years or something like that. So that allows you to move to other contracts and everything and be ready to work. Well, Novetta has been uh, receiving people that don't have the, the, the clearance, but they will keep them at their job working on the projects until they get their clearance. And that's a big thing because once you have that clearance, it's a lot more money in your pocket. And so it's just a good thing to have. I, I was fortunate enough to have my clearance going from the military into this. So I already had mine, but they continue to keep it up for me. And so they take it over and they continue to uh, do my investigations and keep it uh, green for me. All right. So enough about that, I guess. Uh, so at Novetta, again, we're getting uh, taken over by our AFS and that's actually happening in two months is when we'll actually be AFS. But like I said, that's going to help out uh, people that are looking for positions because um, it opens up a whole lot uh, or for my network, it, it opens up a lot more uh, types of opportunities. Uh, it, get, it gets away from cleared opportunities for uh, just regular public uh, information. And if you can see my screen right now, this is how we're starting to transform because we cannot find the cleared individuals. And like Tamika said, it really has become to where you're becoming like a jack of all trades to where uh, the DevSecOps is they know a lot about a lot of different things. And it's becoming to where it's not so much of a siloed um, uh, siloed skills, I would say. I guess you have to know a lot about a lot of things. And as we start going, it's becoming more and more of everything becomes automated, virtualized, and uh, platform as a service. So a lot of containers, container stuff. And as you can see, so what we you see the immediate right here the, for the for the recruiting, the media is what we've always been looking for, and this is what has been really really hard to find for everyone. And it's not because of the talent; could be par partially because of the talent, and it has to do with the talent plus the security clearance. So we're trying to combat that problem. We're trying to get after it. So we kind of see us as a roadmap as in, okay, for this is somebody to ready to go, some immediate, that's, we're ready to recruit. That's what we want, right? We can't get it. So we're, we're working on that for what we call our selecting tier. So we've been trying to add, go out more in the community. community. And like Tamika said, we're trying to spot, uh, partner with some of the uh, local universities here for us. I'm in San Antonio, Texas from the local universities to try to mentor these younger students that are coming in the, you know, the CS degrees and stuff like that. So uh, they can do internships with us over here at uh, uh, Novetta. And then uh, again, with that going even like to the undergrad section of the, uh, the CS or even just the other tech um, degrees, you'll see the identify, which is identifying just the right personnel that we're looking for that we can just groom and build up into the types of people we're looking for to really work with us. So for an immediate person for us, there's three things we're looking for. It's a culture. Um, they got the skill set and they got the clearance, right? So that's somebody that's ready to work right away. Now we're having a problem with that and everybody's having a problem with that. Uh, even Amazon, which is one, you know, the largest company, that's all they want is cleared people right now and they can't get enough of them. Um, so that's everybody's problem. <clears throat> so culture, skill set, and uh, clearance. And then for our one to two years for our select, um, it's really you have two of the three. So you may have the culture and the skill set, but you don't have the clearance or you have the culture and the clearance, but we got to build you up on that skill set, which is going to take one to two years. And for the people that we're putting in a three year pipeline, it really is just to come to culture. And we have a pretty good culture here. I interviewed with AFS also, A AWS, I'm sorry, also back in the day. Uh, I didn't make it. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, along with like AWS, you have to have the, the culture fit. That's one of the things we do here at Novetta. So um, it ends up working out really well for us that we have kind of that hard stop where you got to be 
I don't, I don't really know how to explain the culture. My boss would be really do that a lot better. <laughs> but, um, you just got to have what it is that they're looking for. So culture, I'm not really good at explaining it, but it's more of like, all right, is this person going to be part of the team? Are they going to um, treat everyone with respect? Are they a team player? I've already said that. Do the um, are they go getter? Do they want to be in this type of work? Do they have a passion for actually doing the types of projects? Um, that's really what they're looking for here, and it's just you just got to have the right fit. I don't really know how to explain it, but it might be great for me to get my boss to come on here. She's extremely smart so <laughs> she could probably do a lot better explaining than i do I, I yeah i look at culture fit as an overused word honestly but i tell mm -hmm. you how i look at culture fit i look at culture fit as um you know can you can you come in um and uh give out information on what you're doing and can you solicit feedback and how well do you solicit feedback and are you able to, and I talk about this all the time, that's why I always tell y'all to be the solution, uh, the solution when it comes to stepping into the arena of, of solving the problem, right? So yeah. I, that's how I look at, at culture fit. I think it's a overused word, but however, if you are walking into a situation um, where you're, um, you know, a lot of people test like, oh, does this person answer questions? Can they can they actually say, I don't know, um, do they get upset easily? Uh, are they quick to go off? There's some people that, you know, that you just don't want to work with. That's just mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's, just it, we don't want to work it, with. I mean, yeah, yeah there's just some people you just don't want to work with. And that, that don't have nothing to do with culture. Just I'm just going to flat out say it. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Looks like to you, some people just assholes, right? Yeah, and, <laughs> much better said. It's much just better what said. it is. Yeah, uh, you know, some people are just assholes. Uh, yep. And so now here's the trick. How do you spot one? Mm. <laughs> you know, how do you Bobby spot one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. How do you spot one? Right. So, yeah. So it's just it's it's just sometimes you have to you have to realize that um, I push back on that in, in inside of um interview sometimes because people say culture fit but I, I don't I don't I don't know what that means I yes. I say are you solution oriented um and if you are can you define um can you define a problem and then a solution based upon that that's how I look at it yeah great explanation yeah it's I think you're absolutely on the right track when you're like are they can you get along with them? Or are they an asshole? I mean, that's, that's, I think that's a great way to put it. Uh, so kind of that my boss, when we were kind of going through this a while back, as far as uh, looking for the right type of person. And uh, this was a, um, just a quick thing she put together, real, um, kind of what an ideal person would be for, you know, right hire, ready to go right away on put on a project. So the, some of the, a lot the positions that we have here in San Antonio, this is just kind of uh, central for those. Uh, I can't speak for the rest of the locations and we have a lot of remote and everything. So I'm not just preaching for uh, San Antonio, come here and work here in San Antonio. We have locations all over, even outside the United States. And a lot of it is remote. All my devs that I work with are remote. Nobody works in the office except for me and the pretty much the product owners and anybody that has to interact with the customer on a daily basis. I just saw something about I would love to move to San Antonio. I, I didn't catch all that, sorry. Um, so uh, for the projects we have right now, uh, again, are centered for the DOD, but um, if in the San Antonio Air Force is kind of the king here, I guess. Um, and so if you just get a little familiar with what the Air Force is doing is they're really leading the way for the DOD as far as um, trying to incorporate DevOps. And if one of the, I guess, the main leaders that was pushing for it is a, a person named Nick Shalon. Um, he recently stepped down, I believe, as the software, basically the the top software engineer of the um, the Air Force. Yeah, I he, can't recall exactly. He what stepped he was. down, all right. <laughs> yes, he, he did. Uh, so he's been one of, the, and if you see like Platform One and all that other stuff that he's been pushed for, he's been so he's been ahead of the pack. Um, 
And so that's who uh, our big customer is right now is Air Force. So it, it, it really has been pretty cool to kind of see that transformation. A lot of it has been coming away from the waterfall project to more of the agile uh, project, which has been really cool. Um, so the DevOps, <clears throat> and again, this is, it's kind of become to where it's a jack of all trades. So, so you say DevOps engineer, and for us right now, it's a lot of automation and virtualization, but then we're moving into some cloud some we're moving into some cloud projects so it's going to be the same kind of thing right now we're building a SOC, uh a security operation center but uh part of that has to do with dev secops pipelines and it has to do with now maybe some cloud stuff so it, all the engineers get into everything they're super super smart and so you can kind of see that with the positions that we're looking for they're they're totally different but they're all going to be doing the same thing when it comes to it it's kind of weird it's kind of ends up being a jack of all trades you have to learn a little bit of everything but i guess at the core that we look for is um for the automation the virtualization and the, like the platform stuff and the container stuff um uh, the biggest thing that we've come across that has been really hard to find uh, that we use every day and a lot of is ansible um so ansible is uh, one of those automation platforms uh, if people are familiar with it you probably not know a lot more than i do i know it uses yaml as its language and that's about as far as i know um but ansible is, is something to, go ahead i just wanted to highlight some stuff here because i think i think I've, I've beat this up pretty like a dead horse here we've seen this a million times and one I've, I've said it before i said it again kubernetes uh OpenShift or OpenStack, Ansible, Terraform, um, a cloud, uh, AWS, you know, like I say, pick a cloud. And then over here, when you start talking about the hypervisor, you're talking about uh, being where it be installed on on the cloud as well and in um and um and on prem. Uh, we see Linux there, we see the Python and Bash, we, we heard this before. We heard firewall routers to switches and, and virtual uh, routers to switches. So this is not new uh, for for this group when it comes down to what type of skill sets you're going to need for DevSecOps, even down to the Security Plus and the Safe Agile. I've, uh, I've, I've gone over Safe Agile, Scaled Agile. I've shown those as well, too. Like, like this is like the meat and potatoes yes. uh of 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 what the the skill sets that you need to have i i've shown you multiple jobs of this and again i want i want you all to know that each one of these uh uh particular skill sets are jobs like if you know kubernetes you could get a job with just doing kubernetes if you know ansible you could get a job with knowing ansible because Ansible and Kubernetes, by default, it should be forcing you to know Linux, should be forcing mm -hmm. you to be in somebody's cloud, should be forcing you to be on in, in some on type on, on a prem on whether it's a bare metal machine or OpenShift. Um, so again, get you four basic skill sets, um, a cloud, Linux, um, and security is wrapped into those things. Configuration management, Terraform, uh, understand Git, this, which is not on here. You're going to need to know that. Oh, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Just, Very you good. need to know Git flow. You need to understand yeah. Git. It's just, it's, you're not going to avoid it. Um, and on on top of all of those things, I think what makes you a dangerous person is you understand Terraform, where you can go back and forth in between anything on here like you can use terraform to deploy kubernetes you can use terraform to deploy aws azure gcp vmware nutanix linux windows uh you can use v you can use terraform to deploy the, your networking pieces as well too so you become this swiss army knife where you can pick and choose where you want to go in Novetta, where you want to go in mm -hmm. essential federal services or not a federal service I, I want you to have the best options to do and go where you want to go. So this is yeah. just this is just the, uh, just a glimpse of, of what's ahead. So that's why I'm pushing us to get down with the RHCSA and the RHCE and let's get on uh, with, with Terraform. Let's get on with uh, studying for our cloud and being able to look at big pictures like 
back to your big picture that you had up there at first, William, the very first picture. This one? That. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you see how how he has this up. It's actually coming from the CIA triad, but I get it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, again, you see how this picture is broken up, and you see how you just picture yourself at the top, and you're looking down upon what the actual issue is, and so now you have to figure out how to break that up into smaller pieces, right? And so let's let we can even take this from the perspective of what the issues that they had before. Go to your next slide uh, where you had broke it down in one to two years and so forth where you had the grid at. Okay, so they had a big problem, right? So the big problem was, hey, we have all, we need these people that have all these things, culture, skill set, and clearance. But guess what? We can find people with skill set, but they may not have culture. Or we can find people that got the clearance and don't have the skill set, which is probably more than likely most most candidates. They'll find people with the clearance and they can't have they don't have skill set. Yep. So and 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 this particular project is really getting ready to go live in two weeks, and they need to fill five positions, and they don't they can't find five people to fill those positions. So those the, that project is probably gonna suffer because they don't have people, right? And and it's this not a just a clear project. This is multiple projects. So what I want to show you is how they actually made an approach to break that down to get to where they need to. Uh, but even still, even though they broke it down, they still have a a, a problem because they still need to break it down even further. And that's tr the training of the people that you already have. And 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 when you and I both know, and the other people on the phone know, some people are just lazy. They don't want to know. <laughs> they, they don't want to know. They don't want to move ahead. And so I'm just trying to get y'all a different. Just get your mind open. Don't look at this as, as if it's just the federal piece, but look yeah. at the skill sets that you need where you can go anywhere in the company or yeah. anywhere in other companies. I, I just want you to open your mind up that way. Sorry to hijack that from you, William. No. Go back to where you were. I just want to keep an open mind here of, of, of what we're talking about. No, I appreciate that. That's awesome. You're much better at this than I am. I appreciate it. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, and I, I completely agree with the federal thing. And that, that was not my uh, actual initial, uh, I guess, path when I was getting out of the military. I wanted nothing to do with the federal system, but uh, I just kind of ended up sneaking up back in there. I actually was part of a, a fellowship that it takes people from um, the military and actually puts them just for private companies away from any kind of contracting. And I ended up falling into this, but I'm super happy with it. But uh, yeah, I totally understand about staying away from federal. There's a lot of things that uh, I, won't, I won't even get into that. But yeah, I understand to totally. And it's a great thing. Like, I really loved how you said something like, OK, you concentrate on Ansible and knowing it and that gets you in there. And by being there at the company, you learn the rest of this stuff on here also at the same time. Like that's what we can't find is somebody that is in like say one of these four right here that or five whatever's red or even the terraform or anything that know that we're not finding that right now because what i'm seeing is a lot of people that haven't um i don't want to i don't know how to split this but maybe transformed with the times and the technology what we're finding is a lot of people still uh doing with what they know uh say from five years ago even though it's you know technology is changing, it's always today. been done. We're gonna do it. Yes. We're gonna do it the way it's always exactly. been done. Yes, we don't need exactly. to learn this new thing. We're, gonna, yes. we're just gonna do it the same way. Yes, Ma'am, perfect. And and I, that's and as you'll see, you'll see you're gonna start seeing the same thing everywhere. Not just on any kind of federal, but you're gonna see it everywhere in every private company, no matter what they do. Um, I think I saw some earlier today about food ordering companies or something like that. That or needing or something like that. And they're looking for this type of uh, skill set. So it's, it's, it's going to be everywhere um, as everything just starts to transform into it. And so, like I said, this is for what we're looking for in San Antonio. So this doesn't work for everybody. But the great thing about Novetta is when you apply, the recruiters, the way they do it is, say you apply for this job, whatever rec this is, right? Well, the recruiter doesn't just look for you for that job. What they do is they they look for you for every open position 
And based on where you say you want to work, whether that's remote or this location, they look at all those positions too. They try to identify where they think you'd be best at, but the, the cool thing is they send it out to every hiring manager as part of the distro out of the, everywhere across the United States and everything. So it, your resume will come in front of every hiring manager. So you may be the type of person they're looking for. So this is what we were pretty much hurting on the most for right now here in San Antonio. So this is why we have that up here. Now you'll see like, um, again, this is person that's ready to go on a project. So you see like the work experience, they got that, um, they have the TS uh, clearance and then the nice haves they, you see CISSP and security plus those don't technically have anything to really do with the DevOps, but as part of government contracts, that's a requirement. You have to have a security plus or 8570 requirement to be a part of it, but usually they'll give you a little bit of time. It's just kind of a nice thing to have to walk in that door is to have a security plus or a CISSP. And eventually some of those contracts will say, all right, well, for these people, we have the government is saying this, we need to have people that have this certification, whatever certification that could be, it could be anything. Um, uh, could be something from Red Hat, whatever, it doesn't matter. And the safe agile is just, that's kind of what everybody's pushing for. And so to make it already said that she's been talking all about it, which is awesome. Cause it's just having that on your resume, just saying you understand what that is, uh, is another thing that's okay. The hiring manager's like, Oh shit, they already know that. Okay, fine. And, uh, a lot of people, I'll just put this out there too, are still using Jira and Confluence, the Atlassian suites. Um, I don't think you need to go out there and learn it, but if you understand what it is and you have that on your uh, resume, that may be something else too, just because I see a lot of people still using that. We still use it. And um, it's just one less thing a hiring manager could, could just say, oh, well, they already have that. That's much easier. Um, so again, like the skills, the Everything's going for us is automation, virtualization, the platform, all the containers. Um, the great thing right now, so in the past, about two years ago, it was only going to be Azure for basically all the GovCloud stuff um, due to a lot of litigation and uh, uh, AWS not giving up. Now it's uh, it's going to be on both sides. So you'll have an AWS or Azure for GovCloud type stuff. So I am a huge AWS fan. So, uh, which I thought was kind of, I was really happy about that because AWS is just awesome. I'm sure Azure is too. I just don't know a whole lot about it. So I'm kind of partial. And so, so many things that we're using now are starting to use uh, AWS and you'll see more into it. So we just had another, uh, uh, one of my engineers just tested out some more of uh, AWS certifications and it just keeps adding. It's just great. GCP is coming too, but it's going to be on, <laughs> on the uh, class side too, but also from, um, uh, GCP is going to come from an Antho side, and what's not mentioned on this slide, which hasn't been really been brought up yet, is Tanzu, which will fall under VMware. But that's really a big okay. push for people to have Tanzu skills. Yep, Tanzu, mm -hmm. T A T A N Z U. Uh, that's a big push for Tanzu. Um, for people to know Tanz Tanzu okay. Rancher. Uh, is another big push which falls under Kubernetes. But those are very huge platforms that are being tested right now and 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 looking for people to 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 understand it um if you all want to get some experience with terraform go sign up with terraform cloud i mentioned this before mm -hmm. you get your free account um plus that'll give you ex exposure to terraform uh cloud which would give you exposure to terraform enterprise but also gives you an understanding of how to connect the repos and then start doing your deployments and i've shown you you that as well too so we got a lot we we've, we've covered a lot but uh, you get a chance to see where i've been going for the past five years uh that, that i've been talking about this this is this is not new for us it's just so uh, you just you're just now seeing uh the um what i want to call um an overflow of people that they need uh for this mm -hmm. and so uh, this just i just pulled this uh this is one of the job recs we have for the san antonio office and so i just want to actually point out a couple of things that we it's this it pretty much shows the same thing just everything's to me is talking about terraform kubernetes docker working in the safe um so, I mean, just having that on your on your um, resume helps, I'm sure. Going CI, CD pipelines. I know you all hear about that all the time. And uh, <clears throat> so then it kind of goes into what they're actually looking for stated on the job rec. Um, so you'll see uh, five years experience in at least two of the following technologies. So you got virtualiz 
network infrastructure, automation, DevSecOps, Center, Python. So a little bit of everything. Git is a great, um, that was a great one, Tamika. And one of the, um, my mentors here recommendations was for all the junior guys I keep trying to push through to get hired is having their Git repo um, actually on their resume. Um, so like their actual, like if you put your LinkedIn link on there, but your Git uh, link on there too. And uh, that's something that he's really been looking for. And I just been trying to tell that to all the junior devs that have been applying to. I just think that's pretty smart. So they can kind of go back and see you're the real deal. Um, I, I guess, uh, again, this is not my job. I don't normally do this. So I appreciate Tamika for letting me do this. And I will share my LinkedIn on um, the chat. And please just hit me up anytime. I'm never on LinkedIn, but if you message me on there, I'll, I get the message and uh, I'll hit you back and I'll just give you any kind of info I can. Um, again, we're just really looking for people and it doesn't matter if you want to come work here or not. I will try to help you get somewhere because there are just so many opportunities and I've just really fell in love yep. with technology and the people that are in technology. I'm so new to this. Like I said, I've been military forever. I didn't have anything to do with technology, but um, it just kind of opened my eyes and I love it. I love the people and uh, I really like doing this so it's just going to be part of my little thing on the side i guess is just trying to hook people up with uh, positions and everything getting part of the community um again i want to i don't want to take up any more y'all's time i've probably talked my no, butt no. off <laughs> no 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 william i want you to i want you to explain to them how how dire need this is and then i want you to explain uh what you do oh um, yeah william. great thank you yeah, that's great. So every day, let me just uh, stop sharing my screen just for a sec. So uh, it's great. So how we kind of do it at the safe part and as far as the scrum master. Uh, so for us, we have a, a product owner, a product manager, which is the person that kind of runs the um, the over strategic, I guess, goals for the team. Uh, so we're a DevSecOps team running, uh, building this sock for uh an air force for the air force right and so that's one team a part of multiple projects where there's other teams on there and so for this team specifically is so we have a product owner you'll have a scrum master and you'll have a tech lead then you'll also have all your engineers underneath it and some of the engineers may have like a specialty so like a socks me or some kind of like security portion or whatever it's like that or some kind of linux background so they can do some kind of infrastructure or something anything along those lines right and when, um, and when you say socks me, uh, subject matter expert with SOC, what do you mean? for SOC, uh, Security Operations Center. So for a big part of that lately, for what I've seen a lot of, it great is is uh, Splunk. So that's another one. Uh, I haven't seen that too much lately on a bunch of uh, things, but uh, it's something that seems to be really picking back up. I know I had it like it's high there for a little bit, but it seems like it's picking back up as uh, Splunk. So that may be another thing just to know about another foundation's um, to kind of understand. So Scrum, yeah, it kind of threw me off to what it was <laughs> before I, when I was, became, got hired as a Scrum Master, never heard of it. So I, during my internship, I actually was just like uh, bouncing around to every project trying to learn because I wanted to be uh, on the technical side, actually. But I, what I found out is I'm not smart enough. And these people have been doing it for, you know, 15, 20 years and they're just way smarter than me. So um so they brought me in as a scrum master, which kind of works out. So scrum master kind of is, you'll kind of see it as the coach, which is something I've done my entire life. So it ends up working out is uh, I, I'm more of the, the coach, the motivator, the kind of people, the organizer, the keep people on track and making sure everything's happening with the devs because the devs are, are so smart. Y'all are so smart. Um, everybody that works in technology. And so what I try to do is all the um, admin stuff to keep y'all to allow y'all to do y'all's jobs more often. So y'all don't have to get bogged down by all this little, these meetings or this admin issue or this or that. I just try to keep y'all to where y'all can just be um, doing y'all's job and uh, devin it up and really getting after it. So. And, 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 and we're cool if you start talking about uh, sprints. Okay. Yeah. X, task, yep. uh, we're, 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 we're cool with that. Um, it's something I talk about all the time uh we can you can even go into like uh what does it mean to uh have a stand up so what yeah, what is a, what is a stand up yep so uh scrum master is kind of the coach then you have the product uh owner and then you'll have uh the tech lead those are kind of 
I don't want to say they're the leadership, but they're the kind of the, the separate from the devs a little bit. Um, just because they do a lot more admin stuff. The tech lead is pretty much like the lead engineer, um, kind of does a lot of the, how the architecture is going to be and just kind of leads all the engineers. Um, okay, so like a normal day for the devs and for me and for everyone else, I guess, is, um, so you first start up on a day as a daily standup. We do ours in the morning, um, which is normally what you do. And it's really just like a 15 minute, everything has time limits. So the, the, the DSU for us is 15 minutes. And it's the majority is really just about, okay, going through with each person. And they're gonna tell you what they were working on yesterday, what their plan is to work in. Uh, yes, product owner, product manager, pretty much the same thing. Um, it just depends on, okay, safe. Are you talking safe? Or are you talking another scrum way? It, it's all the same thing. Um, so the DSU is like a 15 minute meeting and it's, you just kind of go down the list. Uh, the scrum is the one that leads up all the events, all the, the meetings and everything. Yeah. What did you do yesterday? What are you doing today? Are there any blockers? And another important piece is that is to bring in for any kind of coordination issues because everybody has so many different hats they got to wear under a DevOps that, okay, so they, this, this person might understand Linux a lot more and this, this dev is working on a Linux piece of some kind of research or anything, and they may need to talk for an hour later of the day. So they kind of talk about that. Or if there's a dependency, on something that uh, a task that needs to be done what is that dependency and how can they work through us for more coordination so that happens at the dsu which is usually in the morning and then for the most part you'll be just <laughs> the, the scrum and the po will be in meetings all day uh, either dealing with customers or uh, just dealing with other matters or trying to coordinate with other teams because you'll have a lot of times you'll have a team that has to coordinate with another team um, just because the projects kind of run together, like we're working on this project is actually part of a bigger project. And so uh, you don't want to take the devs away from that if you don't have to. So the scrums will get together, the product owners, and then the tech leads will do that, a lot of that. So they can just try to coordinate. Okay, we're going to be trying to do this at this time. So uh, across you'll see during um, a scrum is you'll see what they call a PI, which is a um, a not a product increment. I've just been doing that all day today. All right, just forget about it. a feature. Okay, so what you'll see is a feature. And a feature is what you'll work across a PI. And what that is, is that's a deliverable product that you can give to the customer. And it doesn't have to be anything big. It could be like, hey, the customer is asking for this button to be on this dashboard to do this. Well, as you all know, there's a lot more to it than just actually placing the button there. So we have a feature. And what we'll do with that feature is that's the product that we're going to deliver, whatever that is, that's the button. And then we'll break it down into different stories. And each story is a task that can be done um, by one of the devs and it over a certain amount of time. So we'll say, okay, this story is going to take one day. This story is going to take three days. And then what will end up happening is many sprints throughout the PI uh, that just think of the increment. And, so say what we do at ours is two week sprints. You'll see one week sprints, you'll see four week sprints. It doesn't matter, but for us, we do two week sprints. So we just keep it at two week sprints. So what we do is we try to break down as many stories as we can in those sprints. Yes, the Fibonacci sequence is your, is your friend. So you break it down into uh, those stories that you're gonna try to do during that sprint. And the feature is what you're gonna do over across all the sprints together. So sprints uh, for us, there's six sprints in a PI. So for a feature, we're gonna go across the whole PI, right? Well, we break down to what those stories of the feature throughout the sprints. So once we get to the last sprint, that feature is complete and we can deliver it to the customer. The reason we do it that way is because it's part of the agile uh, mindset. And that's because we try to deliver something every time so that the customer can actually use it and use it and try to tell us what they like about it, what they don't like about it. But also so the operator, the customer can give us feedback and we can use that feedback in planning for the next feature or whatever we're going to do for the, the actual customer. And so as we go throughout those sprints, like I said, we have two week sprints. When that sprint comes to a close, what we'll do is we'll we'll demo demo demonstrate something to the customer of whatever that product was. Um, we'll go over our sprint with the customer. And then after that, once we're done with that, we'll come back and we'll plan for the next sprint. We plan for the rest of the day for that next sprint. And then we start the sprint for two weeks. Then we'll do that over again. We'll re review with the customer and demo it. And then we plan for the next sprint and do that all the way throughout the PI. And then so the, the PI, once uh, that's complete, which is uh, roughly, I don't know, three months, uh, six times two, what is that? 
whatever that is, six times two weeks, 12 weeks. So that's about three months, four months. Um, then we do another PI. And at that time is really when we can deliver or uh, take over whatever new features the customer wants. And the customer will prioritize those features into what they feel they want more than the other. So they actually get a lot more control of what's delivered as in the old what the old style of the water waterfall projects. So in the government contracting, especially is the contract would be written up. This is exactly what's going to happen. OK, we start making this. The delivery date is two years from this time. So then at two years, OK, we deliver this sock instead of now with with sprints and the agile is we're able to deliver little portions of that sock, the security operations center throughout those two years instead of them not having anything. And then all of a sudden they have this uh, this product at two years and it's like, well, this is not even what I wanted because two years ago, maybe this was part of it. But the way technology has moved, it doesn't work. Um, so that's a whole, um, I guess, down and dirty on uh, as far as uh, scrums and everything. So for I'm sorry. So I would just say real quick, I got off topic, but for a scrum master. Yeah, I run all the events. I run all the meetings and uh, the product owner is the one that associates with the customer. The tech lead is what associates with the, the devs. And I am the conduit between and I am there to make, make the devs happy and make them uh, be as productive as possible without having all this interference from everyone else. And yeah, so I'm just kind of the guy behind or behind the guy. Got you. So, uh, Joan, just, we can't. You're, Joan, you're echoing. Oh, sorry. Are, Are you certified? certified? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. I'm I'm certified as a Scrum Master. Um, and so what are there? There's different types of Scrum and Scrum all like you know every uh, flavor. There's just a lot of different flavors of Scrum. And what I've been seeing the big. Um, I guess trend is everybody moving to what's called SAFE, so Scaled Agile Framework, like Tamika said earlier, so S-A-F-E, and uh, Scaled Agile Framework, and um, that's what seems everybody seems to be moving towards, and it just makes Scrum at a, at a bigger level, at a more of a company corporate level, uh, much easier to uh, I run. If you're having a lot of projects that need to be... Um, I guess coordinated together because there's a big feature. So say, I guess like, say if you have an iPhone coming out, well, there's gonna be one team that's on, um, I don't know, the, the the microchip. There's one team that's on the actual design. There's one team. So all those teams coming together to collaborate as opposed to uh, say, I'm just going to make uh, a web page or something like that. Well, maybe that could be just one team. You don't need that whole overarching um, infrastructure behind it to really support it, which is what SAFE is. SAFE is that infrastructure behind it to really support it, to bring like a corporate level um, scrum across the whole the whole corporation or company. Ooh. All right, so you all heard from William. You know about No Better. Uh, what, uh, do you want to drop the link to the jobs or should they just go on no better and just search? No, no, and I'll, your, thank you. And, yeah, and so, your but, LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're cutting you off. <laughs> uh, you are okay. good. And, I, and <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to everybody else who may have questions. Yes, please open up some questions. I think you had a safe agile question before. Uh, let's see, your LinkedIn just got dropped. Um, anybody got any questions on any other jobs? Like we only talked about DevSecOps, but did you want to know about other jobs? I do have yeah, a question. I want to know about the other jobs as well. I'm sorry, uh -huh. did I just cut somebody off? I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all good. Um, what, do you have like list Linux Windows system administrator positions or? Yes, we have like we have pretty much everything under the sun. I would I, I pulled out the list of uh, all the jobs we have, but I, unfortunately at the top it said it was confidential with Novetta, so I can't share it. But there's a list. Uh, there's 348 open positions with no, just Novetta right now, and it's everything under the sun from. Um, any kind of administrator, just Windows, Linux, it, it doesn't matter. We have everything. Um, I wish I could speak more to that. I just know what I need. 
So <laughs> unfortunately, but what I have seen and what's really worked out is we've brought on people that um, say they're a Windows administrator for another project. I may not have mentioned this earlier, but Novetta doesn't hire for their project. We actually just hire the people and we'll end up putting them in the project, whatever we feel actually fits them. So if a contract goes out, you don't, you're not losing your job. You're actually just moving to another contract or whatever. There's, okay. there's plenty of work for everyone on everything. So um, it's like we hired, uh, I can't remember exactly what he does, what he did, but he was, he's gone over three different things now. And, but we hired him for the first thing, but we just found out he's just so dang smart and he knows so much stuff that we just continue to uh, increase his, uh, introduce him to new things. And now he's actually taking over in April as a DevOps engineer, even though that's nothing from what we hired him for only less than a year ago. And he didn't have a clearance and now he does. So well, that's it, we're just that's really, we're really awesome. looking for the right people. Yes. That's yeah. Awesome. And I can say, I can say Novetta is a good company. I had an experience with Novetta when I was in DC in Virginia. So um, we, we'll talk offline uh, on that, but it's a good company uh, um, as far as that goes. And then I saw in your, in your post and I heard you mention that you came in through an internship and I heard you mention about a fellowship. How does yes. the fellowship work? Okay, so unfortunately for, so we have two, uh, a fellow, a fellowship and an internship, right? Um, unfortunately the one, the internship is one is for the summer for university students. And the other one is for, uh, people that are getting out of the military. So they call it a skill bridge fellowship, um, which is like the common name for it, but it's like what the DOD has introduced, excuse me, for people getting out of the military is your final six months. They'll allow you to actually, they'll still pay you and everything and allow you to intern at a, a company, which is what I was able to do with Novetta. Uh, I was able to do a skill bridge. And uh, so for six months, I was able to learn on the job and just learn all these different things. Um, and I ended up getting a job out of it, which was really good. But I was able to see all the projects across that we do here in the office. So I ended up learning so much and it really helped me out because I was coming into tech and I thought I wanted to do one thing and it turns out that's not what I wanted to do. And uh, so DevOps is where I want to be. So I'm not smart enough to be in it. So I got my little piece in it as a scrum master, but I originally I wanted to come into cybersecurity and uh, just after working in the position and shadowing, I just realized I like doing this so much more and uh, it's really helped open my eyes. So that's an opportunity. Now, I don't want to say there's, they'll still definitely do internships is the only, issue I would say is for somebody that doesn't that isn't in college or the university or it is you know it's just an internship I don't know if you're going to get paid or anything so uh but don't worry I mean the internship would be great if you're still in a university or if you're getting close to time to getting out of the military but we will hire you so you can apply for an internship which is great but like I said the the the, the person the the recruiter grabs yours um resume and they ship it out to every hiring manager. So I came in as an internship as I was looking for, but they actually, they hire, they said, okay, well, we're going to fill this position with him. And then when he gets off his internship, we'll just hire him. So I came in as a person that was to be hired. Unfortunately, I was able to do on the job training for six months and then actually find out that that's not the actual job I wanted to do. And they were, happy enough with me to put me in another position. That's what I wanted to do. So. <clears throat> oh, that's so good. The people resources, William. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Kiara, I think you had a question. I cut you off to Sheikha. Did you get your question out before we move on? Yeah, no, he actually um, answered it and put it in the chat about the uh, different types of jobs aside from the um, DevOps. Got yeah. You. So these jobs yeah. I posted on here are just, what I'm looking for in San Antonio, but like I said, don't let that stop you because there's so many positions available and you just click that link, pick one that's close to what you think you want to do. If not, it doesn't matter. Just click one of those links. It doesn't matter. Apply and tell them where you want to be located and what you see yourself doing and when you want to be done. And it gets your resume literally gets sent out to every hiring manager. So I if mean, it's remote, I'm game. 
Yeah, there are, there are, there's so many remote positions available. Okay. And like I said, as we're moving to AFS, it, I, from what I understand is AFS is even more remote than we are because I, I believe that's what they're trying to transfer everybody to. But like I said, my devs, they all are remote. The only people that come into the office are myself and the POs. So <laughs> that's it. And I could even do my job remote. So yeah, do not hesitate. It, just because it says San Antonio, it don't matter. Just click one of those links. Yeah, more, it does it doesn't. Yeah, matter. more more most of the stuff for for the 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 DoD is shifting left to the point where, uh, in some cases, you don't even need uh clearances. No, uh, because the, the because the the work is is um remote and yep. unclassified. Yep. Right. So working in in Gov Cloud, working in Azure Gov. Uh, mm. I don't want to call it Azure Gov Cloud, but Azure. I uh, guess you can say Azure Gov Cloud, um, and even um, in some cases working on FedRAMP, you know. So it's just it yeah. depends on on the project and, and, and which work. So some jobs, some of the jobs don't even need you don't even need clearances. Some, no, some jobs it's, are like, hey, do you know how to do this? We need people to do this ASAP exactly. now and, and being able to push it up. And then in some cases, you'll find jobs where they're hiring people just to come in and train people on de what DevSecOps is. Yes. Like you may be, a ti be, be part of a Tiger team because people just don't know. Exactly. Just, and that's that's the truth. And that's, I have, um, so yeah, if you if you have a security clearance or not, it doesn't matter, still apply. I have, have uh, so I'm part of the distro and I have resumes come across my desk daily that have no security clearance. It doesn't matter. Uh, I can't pick them up for this job, unfortunately, because, well, not, let me not say that. I can pick up anybody that doesn't have a security clearance. What I'm finding is I can't find DevOps engineers, whether they have a clearance or not. So it doesn't matter. Just come all, in and all apply. All day, every day. Oh, yeah. All, <laughs> so I can't all find day, them. Every day. So, you can't, yeah, you I, I needed to start them. applying. I can't, I cannot you can't find, find them. Like, they, like, it's rare, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I, I, looking for people now like most recruiters hit me up i probably get i probably get i probably get 40 emails a day for devsecop yeah. jobs yep. every day yep and every, so every we're, single day what we're doing is we're having to what we're, we're, i don't say we're having to but what we're doing is we're taking people that didn't apply for a devops or anything that are some kind of network administrator or whatever and we're taking them we see that they have that base knowledge and we're training them to be a devops uh, we're just looking for the right fit, and then that's how it happens. So just apply. You just you just looking for something to start with, right? Yes, so that's why absolutely. I say, Thank you. That's perfect. So, yeah. Right. So that's why I say if you understand Linux and you understand yes. Ansible, yes, I can start. I I I I can start with you from that. If you understand Linux and you understand cloud, I could start with something for you that because I could throw you yes. Ansible and you could pick it up. But I got to yes. have, and this is why I, I push Linux so much, because if I can start you with, if I can get you with Linux, I can add on anything else yes. on top of that. So I just that need to true. make sure that we can get you in the door, right? Yes. And you don't have to say what the average salary are. If you don't want to, but I'm gonna give a range, and you say yes or no. Oh yeah. So, uh, so we'll say from junior to senior, you're probably looking anywhere at between 120 to 200. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Range. All day, all day, and they pay really, really, really well. <laughs> Uh, Dovetta will not advertise their, uh, salaries, not no like anywhere, not even on there because for every person that comes across, they actually negotiate for that person. Like I said, we don't hire for contracts. We actually hire for person, the people, um, because we're going to, we're trying to keep them for a long time. So, uh, salary is a huge part of that and they negotiate it. And I think you'd be extremely pleasantly surprised with what Novetta offers. I know I was, and, uh, it's just, I can't believe how much money these people make, but then I, I work with them and I understand you can't get them number one. And then number two, the things that they can do just blows my mind. So they're worth every penny to me. Well, I've been preaching this forever. 
And, uh, you know, that's all I'm going to say. Come, <laughs> come, so much money. Come, come get you a little something, something so you can yeah. start building your real estate empire. That's yes. all I'm just saying. That's yes. all I'm saying. That's it. And then you have the opportunity to work from home. Like, oh, my gosh. It's just, I can't, they, I mean, it just blows my mind, but it's, it's, they, they, they deserve it. And it's awesome. And more power to them. Yeah, I want to work from home. And yes, I want to do DevSecOps now. Yeah, there you go. I have a Linux Plus cert and there you go. Uh, I'm working on Ansible right now. Nice. So, yep. and That's along with that, I'm trying not to burn myself out, but I it's hard not I, to. Yeah. And at, at this point, Tashika, I think you should just be applying. And practice yeah. it in a real. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, think, I, I think I think at this point the the interview is probably gonna give you a better idea of how to focus your studying. Um, huh? when you, so when you go into the interview and they start asking you questions about well, how do you how do, how would you approach this problem? How would you break this down? What's the difference between Terraform and Ansible? Um, if you are on a Linux box and you have to solve this problem, how would you solve this problem? Yes. What's the difference between Rail 7 and Rail 8? What new features came out? How can, if I give you a, a, a particular uh, feature uh, to handle in a sprint and you couldn't get it completed, how would you uh, incorporate others to help you complete it? Would you incorporate others to help you complete it? How no, modular you can you make this problem? It's this is all recorded, so you're good. So, but it's just the 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 fact of I I I start you all off with the basics of understanding Linux because number one, I, mm -hmm. I, in, in 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 most of the federal spaces, you're gonna be working on a Linux box, um, especially if you're talking about Kubernetes. Yes. Um, and then you're gonna start talking about understanding. CI/CD pipelines, so GitHub Actions and GitLab. Uh, mm -hmm. Some places have Jenkins. Either way it goes. Do you understand continuous integration? Do you understand the difference between continuous delivery and then continuous deployment? If you understand those three and you understand scaled agile and you understand security and you understand automation and infrastructure as code, if you know that, and if you can speak to that, like if you got off the phone tonight, if you could drop that down and answer those questions and look at a repo and tell someone what's wrong with something yeah. or where a failure may happen, you have a job. I think you all go in at it trying to get everything. And I'm not saying get everything. I'm saying these are the fundamentals that you, that you need to have. But however, you can get a job with just this here. And so that way you can get in the door and start working on, especially with Novetta, uh, what, what is your uh, education credit do you have? Do you all do like 5,280? Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, I think 5,250. I think that's what we do. 5,250, yep. All right. And then do you all have like a partnership with maybe like a uh, plural site or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah. To... We have a... Uh... I think four. Uh, we have LinkedIn Learning. We got a, a Cloud Guru. We got Plural Site. I want to say there's one more. I don't use the other one. I forgot what the other one is, but there's another one. I know it. So, but yeah, yeah, and those are all free. Yeah. So again, get get you got enough get enough skill sets to get in the door. But if you had all four of those skill sets as a fundamental, of course you're. I don't want to say your property value goes up, your your carrot that gets dangled in front yes. of you goes up, right? Yeah. So that's one of the things right. we've been doing um, is uh, my mentor, who who's actually my boss, um, one of my bosses. <laughs> he uh, he started this, um, I guess, this pipeline for um, new hires, and because new hires aren't don't know Ansible or don't know whatever we need them to learn. And so they go through the pipeline for their first, you know, that's what they do for their job during that time is learning. So learning is a big part of it. And like uh, Tamika said, it's just, you're not going to know everything, but you know, the basics, you come in, you're hungry, you know what to do and you, you understand all the basics and the fundamentals. Well, they'll feed you the rest. They're just looking for the right people to come in and get after it. So, and it sounds like everybody yeah, here that I've heard from is the right type of person. So you just need to apply. <laughs> now, now they just need to drop their resumes to you, right? Yes, you just need to, absolutely. To, like, and, 
I'm glad you brought that up because that's another thing. And like you said to me, a very good point was um, the interviews. That was something I wasn't aware of coming into it, but I've been in part of, of a lot of them with my mentor. And uh, that may be something I could uh, maybe set that up on the side is um, a couple of mock interviews with him just because I've seen him go through it. And also my other mentor there, my other boss, she is they're just phenomenal at it. And I learned so much just from being in there and the first few times that I've tried to, I guess, give that knowledge to the, uh, the juniors that I've been talking to online, uh, trying to help them get jobs and everything. <clears throat> But maybe something that I could maybe set something up with them that um, they could do maybe a mock interview with someone and yeah. then re we record it maybe or we could just do that and we just maybe kind of go through the the tips and the pointers and but yeah that's a that's a huge part of it is that interview and that's what I've been seeing a lot of is um, they're going to go through that resume they're going to ask you the fundamental questions they're going to say okay yeah you have this problem how do you do it and that's something I wasn't prepared for I never knew anything about that so that was a really good point Tamika. Yep, and I would love to have your your mentor on as well too. Right. He'll do um, it. In terms, he'll do it. Yeah, bring, bring him on anytime. We can go. We, I, you know, I I live for this. Oh yeah, I live for this. This is this is my this is fun for me. Yeah. Um, uh, have have him on so we could get a, get a discussion on not just the 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 pipeline of mm -hmm. of training, but the but the but the overall end result. I think people really. Um, and this is no slight on you. I think companies do a horrible job on defining what the end result is. For example, yes. if if I have all these skill sets and I'm building these pipelines, what's the big picture of, mm -hmm. of, of what's the problem I'm solving? Yep. And how can my skills be utilized elsewhere in the company? Like, for example, I can go work on a space project. I can go work on quantum computing. I can go work on blockchain mm -hmm. in dev with using my DevSecOps skills because exactly. all DevSecOps touches every, every single thing. one of those things. Sure. And every company is doing that. We got drones. You need to have a deployment for the actual applications onto the drones. So that needs to be some type of security, some type of monitoring, some type of testing. Uh, we need to have uh, data. Data needs to be secure. There needs to be an analysis on that data. However you want to slice these things up, DevSecOps and your data engineering, I, I, like I said before, are going to probably end up being a happy marriage, and and that's just who you're going to be. You're going to know from an an analytical perspective, and you're going to know how to deploy an application in a pipeline in order mm -hmm. to do whatever, right? So yeah. I just see that as a, as that being a mean. But I think I think companies do horrible job in showing what the big picture is yeah. and where your skill sets because a, a, a lot of people like think they're sick ops and they're like oh i'm pigeonhole and i can't do anything else and i'm saying you could do everything you can yeah. you can take yourself and, and be anywhere yep that's exactly why i transferred over to it when i first got a taste of it as an intern i just saw the uh the opportunity is just caught me so I share your enthusiasm and I just wish I could continue to, I, I know I'll, I'll keep talking about this all night, but I just wish I could just like let y'all see what I've seen kind of thing. Just so y'all could like get a taste of it and you'd be like, okay, you get this, you'd get this fire too. And just really get after it. Just super motivating. So are there any other questions for we let William get out of here? Cause I know he's got, he got, he got to go uh, scrum. <laughs> gotta go get his stuff ready for tomorrow. Yeah, I do. <laughs> he gotta go <laughs> scrum <of> scrums. <laughs> again, so my my LinkedIn I put on there. Uh, again, I I pretty much never check it. Please friend me. I'll friend you eventually. But if you uh just message me, I actually do get notifications. I got a message and I'll message you back. Um, and yeah, we can get to talking. Uh, Tamika, I will talk to my mentor. He does this stuff all the time. He's he he has he's part of a cybersecurity club we here. Get you in our slack. We gotta get you in our slack. I'm gonna send you an invite for our slack. Okay. That way yeah, it probably be easier because I know you hit up you're in the other slack. So you can yep. just slide in the slack, boom, here you go and yep. go from there. That way you don't have to worry about LinkedIn. You just be ready to oh, rock. Be cool. And you all you know, you know, you can turn off your notifications when you don't want to be bothered or not. <laughs> but, but, I can post all those jobs in there every day. And I'll 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 start yeah. uh tracking down some that um 
that are more uh, broad on here too, I guess. You know, just not not so much of the ones that I'm looking for in San Antonio, but more that we're looking across. It's okay. Conus, it's so. okay for the ones that you're looking at. Saying, it's okay because here, here's how I look at it. At least, at least if you know, and this is something that I don't, I, I, I'm sure nobody does, but you, this is the other thing. At least if I know you in in the in that particular position, maybe you could be a referral to oh, absolutely. something else, and you get yep. and you get a referral fee, of course. But you know, however y'all want to slice it up, but at least you yeah. got somebody inside that can at least refer you to something else. Absolutely, and I'll do that all day. That I love doing that now. That's like I said, I've, after I'm meeting everybody in tech, how much I like everybody, how how cool everybody is, just kind of got me motivated to help out as much people as I can. And I was able to bl be blessed to get into this position. And now it's my turn to give back. So just super happy and super excited. And Tamika, I really appreciate it. If there's no other questions, I'll let y'all get to it. Now I'll, I'll leave y'all alone so y'all can talk about me behind my back and I won't be there to get it. <laughs> uh, you know, I got to go light on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're the type of people that talk about you in your face. <laughs> oh, don't do that to me. Don't you, I, I can't take it. You know, we, um, we, we, we should be, we're tough enough to take constructive criticism <laughs> because it's coming from family and it's all love, <laughs> <laughs> but you did a good job, William. Well, thank you, you so much. And again, uh, it's not something I do. It's my first time. So I'm glad y'all took it easy on me. And if you sent me a private message, please, uh, once I get in the Slack, just send it to me on there. I'm real bad about these chats on this thing. I got, I got to have it in front of my face at all times, like Slack or something. Um, and I'll just do whatever I can. I appreciate it, Tamika. You are awesome. Like everything you said, you're on point. You're a great mentor to everybody. And uh, I think we're going to be good lifelong friends now. And I just really appreciate yeah. this. Super cool. Yeah, you could you could talk to me when you when you uh, when you become the blocker in in your scrum. So oh, that's I, I'll <laughs> <laughs> if, next time I can actually get some presentations going for y'all if y'all really want some good scrum stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We always welcome stuff like that. Always welcome. I always try to give real world view of what's going uh, on, not yeah, really the cool. superficial stuff that people be like, well, I took this class over at Coursera and they say it. Nah, no, this is what we're really doing over here. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank cool. you all so much. Uh, I'll just keep talking. So I'll get off of here. All right. Thank you all again. All right. Bye. All right. Have a good one.